Hey, this is Tim, and I'm here today to make you more familiar with an IBM 305. So this is what we have in front of us, an IBM 305. If you look at the back of the 305, you can see that I have power, a small, a short PCI, a low profile, a normal PCI slot, got a keyboard, mouse, a single video, and then you have two network interfaces. Both of these are not for management, but they are actually network interfaces. Another thing that not a lot of people know about is this tiny little switch. There's an NMI switch. You can't see it in there, but if you needed to do a hardware non-maskable interrupt uh, crash on the machine, there's an NMI switch right there. You also have a serial uh, interface right there. Also on the front, we have two USB and some LED for power and hard drive, and this is an NMI, and then just a power button. Over here, this particular one has a slot for a CD-ROM, and it has a slot for a floppy, but neither one of them are actually installed. So let's pop it open. There are two screws, one on each side in the back, and you just slide the lid off. Up in the front, we have two bays. Each of them are three and a half inch drive bays, normal for a SATA IDE or a SCSI drive. Each one of them is called a sled, and they are screwed in. I'll unscrew this one. There's nothing in it, so I'll just go ahead and unscrew it and show you what it looks like. Up on the front, we have where usually a floppy drive would be connected. And then on each side, we've got the four screw holes where you could put in a drive. And then this is just to help keep it down inside the chassis. That one's in, screw it back down. It has its own IDE interface over here, and its own IDE cable, and it also has its own power, Molinex power. Then over on the far side, we have another drive bay. This is the primary drive bay, and I don't need to unscrew it, but it's a drive bay that you would typically have a CD-ROM on top of it, and the CD-ROM is cabled here, and it has its own primary IDE interface. The IBM 305 has four memory slots, four of them. They don't have to be matched or paired in any way. You can put them in however you like. Pretty easy to take them out. PC2100, put that back in. Good. Inside the 305, there are a series of fans. There are two fans up here that take airflow from the front of the chassis and move it through and over the processor, because the processor is actually underneath here, under a copper heat sink. There's another fan at the back, another fan right there at the back, that keeps the air moving there. And then for the flow for the drives and also for the power supply, there is a fan right here. One of the questions I often get asked about the 305 is how can I put in other cards, like a video, another NIC, or a RAID card. And it's pretty easy to do. There are two PCI slots. The first PCI slot is the easiest one to get to. Let's just unscrew this and pop out the riser. There's the riser, pretty easy. We'll try putting in something like a SCSI. This is not a SCSI RAID card, this is just a SCSI card. So. While well, IDE drives are supported already on the motherboard, if you wanted to, you could just disconnect the IDE cables and put in a SCSI card and pop that in there. And you can see this is a full length SCSI card and it still fits just fine. Screw that back in and then you would put in a couple SCSI drives and just cable them all the way up to this connector right over here. Now there's another interface for PCI. It's down here in the bottom. You can see it right there. It's yellow, rather long. For that, I am adding a three-wear IDE controller. Now you could use, again, a different low profile, which is the short front. You could use a short front if you wanted to put in a different card down in there. So I'm going to, first I'm going to unscrew it in the back. Show you what that looks like. Unscrew this little guy. That's the keeper. Take out that and then slide this IDE card down underneath and pop it in. It's 
So once you get that in, then go ahead and screw this back in to keep that PCI card in place. So as you can see, we've got a RAID card here and also a SCSI RAID card here. If you needed to, you could put something in, like take one of these kits out and you could put in an extra, an extra VGA card or an extra NIC, though why would you need three NICs? Doesn't matter. And that's about it. I'll close this guy up. And screw it on. And there it is. Have yourself an IBM 305 rack mount server.